see how thin these are? There's just holes in these, but you look like Jesus. Ultra lightweight packing cubes. It's made out of bamboo. You see those little cups? Seven days of adventure trekking. Do you know what adventure trekking is? Come back to this one in a second. You're not just sitting in a lounge in a fancy hotel waiting for your Uber to come pick you up to take you to the Morgan Wallen concert with your girlfriends or something. You're not sharing a room with a bunch of, you know, dudes <laughs> competing over who's got the best cologne as you get ready to go out for a night on the clubs, bro. Adventure trekking is that thing where you are going to be doing some real work. You're gonna be walking through something beautiful. I might be doing the Camino in Spain. It might be going from village to village in, in like the Alps. How amazing would that be? Just like beer tavern to beer tavern, walking your way. You need something comfortable to carry on your back, all your things that you need. And then you need to figure out what the hell you actually might need. I just got back from walking about 15 to 20 kilometers a day in South Africa, but I wanna show you everything that I packed for that trip. So first of all, for an adventure trek, if you are walking a lot, shoes are gonna matter a lot. So here's what I brought. I actually brought two pairs of shoes and then my Earth Runners sandals. Now, I run and jog in these sometimes. I love these, I live in these. You look like Jesus. I'll link to them below, but they're awesome because I care about the health of my foot, the strength of it. Anyways, you can watch some of my barefoot shoes videos. I went with these two different shoes from Lems because these ones are like a barefoot shoe. They're extremely lightweight, but they have a great sole on them and they're really flexible. I don't know what it is about this shoe, but it is the most comfortable one. I'll link exactly to this one below. And then this one just looks great. Much stronger sole on this, not barefoot, not quite as wide in the toe box, but extremely grippy on the rocks that I was walking on. First point of, of education here is your footwear. You need to be thinking so much about your footwear and the best thing you could possibly do is be testing that extensively beforehand. I'll link to all that below. Before I finish this thing, you need to be thinking about socks. I put all my socks up here. My favorite are, and you can see just how favorite they are to me by the fact that they're just like holes. There's just holes in these, but these are Merino toe socks from Injinji. Toe socks, you, you, never, you never know. Sometimes you get real wet and you get a blister between your toes, You're, you don't like that. While we're on that, Merino underwear, I, I totally recommend. These ones I've been wearing like crazy from uh, Wool and Prints. I can't even, the, the logo's off of it. You know, I used to love these more synthetic ex officios, but Merino actually, weirdly, is so cozy. <laughs> Why do I like Merino so much? Okay, there is actually some good debate around this. Synthetic and Merino, you don't ever wanna be rolling with cotton in an outdoorsy type situation. Merino keeps its insulation value when it's wet. Wool does, natural fibers do. It also moisture wicks really well and uh, synthetic is also good at this sort of thing. I just went with Merino. It just feels like I like being involved in a natural uh, ecosystem like that a bit more. Where's your, what's your take? What's your take on this? Now, I leave my jammies, my jammies out. What do I have? A long sleeve shirt. I love sleeping in a long sleeve. I always sleep in a long sleeve. This one's from Free Fly. It's made out of bamboo. I always sleep in a pair of jersey shorts and a long sleeve shirt. And I just leave this out. Cause tends to, to, if you get to camp late, this is the first thing that comes out. Now, if I was in some place cold, obviously you need to be thinking about this. Right? What I have, when I have done long hikes in cold places where it was in the desert and it was really cold at night, I'm like a thick, fresh pair of merino socks at night. I mean, you bring a pair of thick merino socks just for sleeping. You put those on at night with a pair of like sweatpants or thin, almost base layer type vori pants or something, and, uh, and a long sleeve shirt and you get in your little mummy bag, like, uh, that does feel great. It actually brings back some good memories. I always leave that stuff accessible right in the bag because, but I don't want it to get wet if you know some water leaks into the bag. This bag, 
Uh, I will link to it below, but it is not out yet, and I haven't done a full review of it yet. I really like it. Okay, let's talk about some general sort of packing philosophy. Oh, there's my hat. This is what I was looking for. Sorry, I meant to get this at the beginning of the video. <laughs> I knew it was in there. <laughs> you always wanna have a hat, okay? And sun hoodie. That should be in here somewhere. So my partner on this trip was Six Moon Designs. You know why they call it Six Moon Designs? Because it takes about six moons to hike the entire Pacific Crest Trail. PCT, bro. I have a friend who just did, I, I, I don't know if she did all of it, but she did a lot of it because it was like this transition in her life. And that sounds really cool. You know, I got kids. I can't take that much time away from them. Ultra lightweight packing cubes, nothing fancy at all. These are just buckets to put stuff into. There's no compression or dirty clothes side. There's zero wasted anything. Green for ground, pants, shirts, and then like extra stuff. That sort of color coordination when you're like just disoriented from a long day, you, it can be useful to just keep it real primary. Let's see what I've got in here. This is a, a Merino t-shirt from Proof. This is a Merino long sleeve from Western Rise. Got some regular cotton shirt in here. And then the rest of these are Merinos. I had like two or three days beforehand and then two or three days afterwards. And a lot, like much of those two or three days before and after was spent in travel because I was going from Austin, Texas to Africa. <laughs> That took a while. Video coming up on long haul travel tips. Short sleeves and at least one long sleeve that's not the shirt that, I, that I'm planning on sleeping in. There were several nights where I took, put that jammy shirt on, then this, then my merino sweater on top of that, then my rain jacket, which I'll show you here in a minute, and that was like the thickest that my layer could be. I could, I could add more of these merino shirts and that would make me warmer, warmer. That's all I needed. But that kind of layering means that I have a variety in the day when I wake up, what can I put on? What do I need to put on? And B, I've got the warmth layers when I need it. I love stacking merino shirts on top of each other. This is like a, this video should be sponsored by like the council for merino gear. All right, green for ground here in my shorts. Here's my just regular board shorts. <laughs> this is when my friends stopped calling me Chase and started calling me Chafe. These were a gift from my mom, Saks. I've always thought that the branding, Saks, hey Saks, bro, I was sick. Are those those Saks, like hitting a vape, like Saks, cool, they keep your balls like in a separate compartment. Oh really, that's so cool. It was useful. It was quite useful. And they do have wings for keeping your balls. That's unnecessary but it's a cool brand. Then a pair of Western Rise. See how thin these are? You see this? Listen, if you, if you do one thing in your life, besides buy some Merino gear, find yourself what size of the Western Rise Evolution pant fits you. I will link to it below. Please use my link. It does support the channel. They're not paying for this. Uh, I've used these pants for forever. Look at how thin and small and no space they take up. I could easily have brought a bunch of these pants. The truth is, I only ever need one. They're extremely durable, they're water resistant, they're stain resistant, they are comfy enough. They're not nearly as comfy as like a pair of sweatpants when you're on the wet, when you're on like the long flight. I don't actually wanna be wearing these. The truth is, I could just fine. They're not quite as insulating these are the Evolution. They have another pair of pants called the Diversion, which does have a little bit of a thicker material, okay? Just find out which size of this fits for you and then buy one pair. They're like 100 and 150 bucks, maybe something like that. Um, and tell me how long they last. You, you gotta find the right size for you, you know? You gotta find the right size for you, but then tell me how long they last. I always travel with at least one of these thrown in in case I need it. The other pants, that I brought are these lives in pants, which I'm still living in. These are my cozy sort of uh, on the plane pant. These were my on the plane pant. You know, the mustard yellow, super outdoorsy look, which sometimes gets me into trouble with my cooler friends. They are really cozy and they're really nice. They're really durable. All right, red for just like everything else. I had a towel. Uh, that I threw in here just to keep out of the way. Oftentimes this was just in my bag, a little travel towel from Rumple. I will link to that below. This is good. If you're more pressed for space, Matador makes some of my favorite travel accessories and this is their towel. It like has this little almost 
I wish it was also a Bluetooth speaker because it looks like one. Little case, which you don't need. You just pull this thing out and throw it somewhere in your bag. But this is thinner. I took this because I, I could afford the space, but I preferred using a thicker. Here's a pro tip. Bring yourself a nice-ish, you know, but also performancey button-up shirt. All right, this one is from Rourke, right? Yeah, Rourke. And this is like one of my favorite trail shirts as well as you get there, you pull it out of the bag, you have a beer at the fire, and you're wearing this. Sun hoodie, okay? This one's from uh, Florence Marine. Western Rise has them, Free Fly has them. I actually prefer more of a synthetic vibe. Suffice to say, you go into any store, any outdoor store, you're gonna find a bunch of these sun hoodies. So what you do is you wear a regular ass hat, and then you have your hood on all day long and it's covering you up. I had friends who were wearing wide brimmed hats, or hats with like flaps that come down. The wide brim hat, one of the things that that does get you is your ears and eyes are, are less encumbered by that hood coming down. So you're more involved in the conversation and looking around, maybe, but you're wearing a wide brim hat, you know, so. Then an excellent lightweight rain jacket. And this is from z Pax. Now z Pax makes bags and ultralight gear and it's longer and it like goes dead. It's like not nearly as stylish. It's not your like, wear to the pub thing. This is a fucking workhorse on the trail, pardon my friends. Throwing this thing on, I'm sorry, I have like so much stuff around. Throwing this thing on when I was out there, cause we got a lot of rain the first day. And I just, this with my water sealed, you know, backpack and I was just cruising. 360 camera, waterproof too. There's only one pocket. It's sort of spendy, but for the lightweightness, it's excellent. There's a jacket from Florence Marine, for example, that I love. This guy here, because it crumbles up into nothing and it does do a good job keeping the water off of you. But in situations where you're out and about, you really have to have an actually legit waterproof jacket. You know, this wouldn't have cut it. Also, you always wanna make sure that you've got pit zips on something like that, because if you're sweating a lot, even though it's raining, if you're sweating a lot, that can actually make you colder over time because you're getting all this moisture and it's not able to evaporate and wick, wick. This episode is brought to you by Epica. Oh shit, I didn't even. All right, really quickly, this was my like airplane bag. Where we were going, I had a place to lock up my airplane bag so I could bring this that I wasn't gonna need on the trail. Bluetooth headphones that I love, an extra merino sweater, an actually good pillow for sleeping, the, the, we don't have enough time to get into this right now. Why, uh, subscribe to the channel and watch my long haul flight thing. This occasionally can change your life, lacrosse ball, and you roll your feet with it. Your scapula, your back, your neck, your shoulder. Oh, my butt, you roll your butt. Manta sleep mask, this is the best I've found. You see those little cups? You see that? This is the best I've found. I've got one friend who's very particularly sleeps in a sleep mask every day. And he didn't love this. He likes those flat but big ones. I can't stand those. I don't, I don't like that at all. Then this little guy, nothing would work if it wasn't for this. And that's the sponsor of today's video, Epica. Listen, you need a travel adapter that works all over the place. You want to be able to do the UK. You want to be able to do the EU, huh? What about Australia? I like the ones that have multiple USB-Cs because that comes in handy. This is their 105 Pro. They each come with a little cute little carrying case. So this is a 70 watt GAN charger. You've got one, two USB-Cs, three USB-Cs, two USB-As, and then continental Europe, Australia, China, North America, Japan, and United Kingdom. There's even a spot in here for a fuse. So this breaks instead of your expensive electronic gear and there is a spare fuse stored right in there for you. I mean, I don't know how to convince you of how much more quality this thing feels than literally everyone that I've ever played with. I have nothing else to say. Epica, use the link in the description below. Thank you Epica for supporting my channel and my work. So grateful for you. Thank you. By the way, this little, this little packed 25 liter, one of my favorite under seat bags in the entire world. That's why I brought this. It just fits right underneath the seat. This whole pocket is full of granola bars. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a bunch of sundries here. Now this, 
I literally brought this. My friend who lives in Africa, I was like, what do you want me to bring? He's like, bring minerals and athletic greens. He didn't, he didn't want to carry it. <laughs> so I traveled to Africa with this thing, carried it in my backpack for five days, brought it all the way back home, and now I'm excited to have some in my daily life. Oh, wow. Me and this Vital Proteins Daily Greens, we've been places together. Other sundries, headlamp. Tricks on this is either you have a battery that can recharge this thing, or it uses AA or AAA batteries and you have some spares. That is some pro shit. Ziploc bag, you never know. There was a lot of traversing the water. Another trick from Matador here, this is their eight liter. They have multiple sizes of this, just a dry bag. Throw in the electronics in here when you cross a river or you do whatever. It's, it costs nothing to put this in my bag. Another Matador trick, there's a fanny pack that has a roll top. It's waterproof. I mean, this thing is taped seams on the inside. Super lightweight, so it cost me nothing really to bring. And my camera stuff fit in here when I needed it. I just didn't end up needing it. Another waterproof bag from Pact. This is their large uh, toiletry waterproof bag thing. And I brought a bunch of gear because I was filming this whole thing for for us. Even like a spare iPhone that was my brother's. Oh, this thing's been getting scratched in there. Another little Six Moons bag. Look how cute this little thing is. Just a perfect little accessories bag for throwing stuff in that I might need uh, for my Insta360, which I never ended up using. I used the entire time the Insta360. By the way, this is by far and away the best action cam in the entire world. 500 bucks-ish, you probably wanna get a spare battery. You're just putting it out, filming the whole thing, finding out little shots and bits. Watch my video on Africa. I definitely missed some of the beauty of, of using my full frame Canon cameras and stuff. But to have this and this, and I brought this on like this cheap ho hem, I'll link to this below. They sent this out years ago, never ended up working with them, but this was my cheap like, I don't even think they have this available anymore. They've like upgraded sig significantly since then and this worked fine. If I just brought one thing, it would be this. Runs out of batteries, fine. Or I have a little battery thing that could charge it with. I had a little charger with a bunch of extra cables because, when, and also because I had so much camera gear, I needed to charge this occasionally. So every night, I actually brought this in my tech kit, and this was how I charged several cameras in a phone. Couple more things here. This bag has some great additional storage. A pair of sunglasses that fold up into nothing. And I've lost my little case for them but um, I didn't use them at all. They're polarized, they look really cool, but it's nice, you just have them thrown away in there. Some people, I mean, a lot of people on the trail use them all the time. I don't use sunglasses. Some people really think that's dumb. A little shell for my daughter. Gotta give that to me. Little toiletry kit. I put this in my airplane bag after it was in my regular bag through the whole thing. It's small, Matador, which I like. It's waterproof and super small. Fits in a, in like a, in a really thin, narrow pocket somewhere. Let's see, some critical things in here. You've got some, I've got, you always wanna bring some tape. Adventure trekking, bring a little bit of tape like this. And this was, this came in handy not just for me. Actually, I barely used it. My, most of my friends did. Earplugs. All right, this is a little matador case. Earplugs, earplugs, trust me. I love this thing. Listen, what, how, you, how you toothbrush can really matter when you're out and about. I know I, some of my friends on this trail had their like electric toothbrush. What are you doing? What are you doing? Fold this up, put it away, wide brim, lots of bristles, soft, you know, feels good. Chapstick, in fact, my chapstick ran out on this trip. I need to throw that away. I always bring nail clippers, and I'm very particular about my nail clippers. This one actually, you can use the bottom for a little file. And then your vitamin situation. This one's just magnesium. This one's daily vitamin and vitamin C, okay? I always bring a bunch of immunity stuff when I'm traveling. And magnesium, come on, what are you doing? What are you doing? Especially when you're traveling, what are you doing? If you're not taking magnesium, oh. What are you doing? Stop with the melatonin. It's a hormone disruptor. Like, it's like, don't do that. 
Don't do melatonin. Have magnesium, okay? I think that is it. Nothing in these side pouches. This thing went through a beating and loved it, by the way. I'll link to this specific bag below. Um, more uh, coming out later on, on a review of this thing. All right, that's it. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Thanks for watching. Thank you. If you like this, you, you, we probably get along, so you should subscribe. Hey, I mean, what are you still doing here? I'm tired. I'm about to travel again. I'm going to Florida next. Love you. Bye.